Good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll remind you of our antitrust policy. I'm sure this is burned into your retinas. Um, don't do anything I wouldn't do. So on tap for today, we have our usual reminders. Um, TSC election process, nominations uh, come out uh, or start, I guess, in, in on the 9th. That's correct, right? That's when people send them to you, right? And Tracy? Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, right. Um, so today we're going to get an update from Iroha. And uh, I see Alice on, so I'm either here or Nikolai, I guess, is going to give the update. And then um, Healthcare Working Group, do we have an update? Yeah, that did come in yesterday, so we should be cool. good to go there. Awesome. And uh, TWG China, and I see Bawa's on, so awesome. And um, just uh, as a uh, Bob, <laughs> uh, just as a, um, uh, be before we get into this, uh, we didn't have any updates uh, scheduled for next week. And I don't know that there's going to be anything for the agenda. Um, especially if we get all these uh, done. And so I want to just sort of get a sense of um, the, uh, the, the TSC as to whether we should maybe cancel next week's. Um, give everybody an hour back. Thoughts on, I mean, is there anybody have any agenda items they plan on submitting for next week? I don't have anything in mind. All right, then I suggest that we will and cancel. I'll send an email and remind everybody and Todd or somebody will cancel the invite. Okay, so um, uh, Todd, you want to get going? Sure thing. Uh, so a couple quick reminders. Next Hackfest, uh, October 3rd and 4th, we've already seen a lot of folks register, so that's great. Uh, if you haven't yet, please get registered as soon as possible. <clears throat> uh, we are planning for the Next Hackfest in APAC, likely Hong Kong or Singapore. Um, kind of trying to figure out January, February, March, uh, avoid the, the Chinese New Year holiday and whatnot. Uh, mm -hmm. But we'll let folks know once that's firmed up. Uh, and then we'll be bringing that back to Europe probably April, May, June, somewhere around there. Um, beyond that, the other pressing agenda item is the annual TSC election. We've talked about this the last few weeks. We have pulled together the eligibility list. We continue to update this in real time, um, but please check to make sure that your name is showing up on there. I will drop this into Rocket Chat in just a moment. One second. So on this, um, we're including labs. We're also including, similar to last year, the work groups uh, under the TSC. So the work group chairs are providing us names and emails of those that have contributed. Uh, so please just double check the, the first tab, the master tab, make sure your name is on there if it should be, and correct email. If it's not, please get in touch with both uh, Tracy, Kurt, and myself. Um, as of 5 p.m. on August 8th, we will consider this final for the, the uh, election process that the TSC approved, and we'll get nominations kicked off on August 9th. Hey, Todd, just a couple of additional comments on that. There are uh, quite a few no reply email addresses that are coming from GitHub. So if you are one of those people who have a no reply, also let, uh, let Todd or myself know. And then uh, I did reach out to everybody who had multiple email addresses yesterday. Please let me know which email you prefer to use for, um, for the election purposes. Do you want email addresses as well as names from the working group or do you guys have the email addresses? I have, I have a list of names I haven't sent you yet, but both, I don't. But okay. Both please, if you're struggling to find a couple, we may have them, but uh, both is preferable. Okay, we will do. Cool. From the working groups, the only way to find those email addresses is to look through the <laughs> mailing list uh, because there's no other way to really, I mean, we had contacted people to have them contribute their e email addresses, but 
the you know last year we we combed through the mailing list and that's how we found the email addresses it's not as obvious as uh, you know the github contributors because there is a github username and a email address associated with each we'll, we'll get it figured out we'll, we'll we'll help you out just get in touch with us and we'll get this done don't worry as far okay. as Sorry, as far as nominations for the TSC, um, I had somebody ask me a question and <clears throat> I, I think it's just you self nominate yourself or somebody else can nominate you and you send that, that bio pitch, which I guess is maybe optional to, to write that up, but uh, it's just a note to, to what the TSC list. Yeah, we'll, we'll send out instructions. Um, but yes, uh, it, it's effectively an email to the TSC list. Um, short bio pitch, et cetera. It's exactly the same as last year. So I can copy and paste that from, from last year's Dan, um, give you a heads up of what it's gonna be. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, so everybody definitely check to make sure you're on the list. Um, and uh, Todd, I assume that the reminder about getting on the list is also going to be sent to like announce or something so that, or I, I don't know. Well, you know. announce that, that would hit everyone on the business side as well. So maybe just the, uh, I mean, so spam all the projects and working groups. <laughs> I, I don't want the only way that people find out about this to be if they listen to the recording a month from now. Yep. Um, I mean, one suggestion is for the maintainers to hit the um, various channels that they're in in Rocket Chat or on upcoming calls. We've notified all. Yeah, of but them. that can get missed too. I, I think. E e I mean, I don't. I don't have a problem if maybe each of the maintainers sends to their respective uh, or work group chairs sends to their respective list. Uh, that's also fine, I guess. Uh, but they're not all here either, so. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll figure out some other channels to, to, to <clears throat> move people on. Thanks. Okay. Um, all right, so Alish, are you on? Yeah, I'm on. Hello, everyone. Um, actually, I will let Nikolai uh, walk you through the report. Uh, will you be able to show the report? It's on the, on the, official page and then I might jump in at the end with with few remarks and maybe some questions uh, for for you guys at the hyperledger uh, obviously the next big thing for us is the first table release and then hopefully working together with the hyperledger on the promotion we are also expecting David to visit us for the for the review unfortunately I did not hear back from him uh, I ask how we can support his visit. Hopefully, he will let us know. Um, I'm yeah. coming. I just yeah. want to let you know I'm coming. I'll, I'm that's, doing that's emails definitely. right now. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Great. Uh, so, Nikolai, are you are you on? Yes, I'm on. Thank you. Okay. So let's let's go through the report and then maybe I will jump in uh, on a few topics. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you what's the progress of our project, which which is the Roja. It's the distributed ledger technology written in C++. Um, since the last report, we have released twice with second and third beta. And uh, we're going to release today our next beta version. Um, we have delivered to open source uh, code base for Nakayoshi chatbot, which helps us uh, to connect Rocket Chat, Telegram, and Gitter. So whatever any of our contributors writes in one of these uh, channels. We receive them uh, like in, in Rocket Chat and Telegram everywhere. And it's really helpful, you know, to, to build a community that is uh, really independent of the tools. Also, we publish our updates in the Roja Weekly Digest on our mailing list. And um, we distribute this with Nakayoshi as well. Um, we've got intern working uh, with the design of UTXO model, 
and uh, we're looking forward to see his contribution in the code base. Uh, we have explored the possibility for Ethereum Bridge, and uh, we're going to release this code base soon in open source as well. Um, as for Hyperledger activities, we're looking forward to build uh, a better interoperability, interoperability with Hyperledger Cello, and uh, I've reached out to Baohua later uh, this week, uh, I mean before. And uh, also we have dedicated uh, team members participating in performance measurements, working group discussions and uh, metric uh, paper. Uh, we, have, we have updated our public information in Hyperledger webpage related to the project. Um, so far, so good. And our final release um, seems to be ready in fourth quarter. And so that's like a brief uh, update for the project health. We've got some issues. So uh, we have to improve the openness of the project and diversity of maintainers and make our public design discussions more public. Um, we're going to resolve this with process changes. And also I think as soon as David can come to us and help us more uh, with his you know, experience. We're, we're also discussing things related to tooling with Ryu or Rai, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name actually. <laughs> so uh, we're also asking Tracy and Ming to help us. And uh, we think that that can help uh, with our uh, process overall. Uh, one of the issues related to technical side is we need to build a better system for uh, network regressions. So our next release will include network testing automation. Right now we do this manually and uh, well semi-automatic so we have to run uh, for each uh, you know release in terms of quality gate for each release we have to run all the scripts manually right now and we need to automate this and build more you know network simulation uh, tests um, one of the issues that is uh, you know preventing us from trans from transition uh, uh, that is preventing us right now to transit to Hyperledger Jira is a lack of confidence, but I think this can be resolved as well somehow in the future. And the fact that Jira has an old version and some new cool features like split of issues in Jira are not available, but this is just a minor thing, of course. Um, as for releases, I've mentioned before that we're going to release in fourth quarter with our release candidate and after some period of stability, we expect to ship a final release. Um, you've got some scope defined in the report uh, that shows what else is remaining right now. Some of the items on the list are actively in development, some are in the backlog um, and we're working to improve our velocity as well and to add more contributors. So now you can see there are new contributors to the code base and they come from, they, they come with a different experience uh, in, in their technical skills. Some contribute to our Java code or C++, uh, but still they help quite a lot and we notice, we definitely notice more interest to the project. Um, overall plan right now is to gather more people on uh, two contributors and use case partners, uh, reach quality gate objectives of code coverage and acceptance tests, increase diversity of maintainers and just continue with time-based releases until release candidate and then releasing final version after stability period. I've sent some links in TC channel. You can check out our Nakayoshi boat code base. Maybe it can be helpful for your projects as well uh, to increase number of contributors. Maybe they don't use Rocket Chat a lot. M maybe they would prefer to use Telegram or Gitter. Uh, you can check what we write in our weekly updates. And it's really helpful, you know, to write then a summary for our release. Um, overall, that's it. And if you've got any questions, I would be happy to answer. Hi, yeah, thanks for the update. This is Dan. Um, Hi, Dan. Um, I don't have a great uh, 
great way to explain what Iroha is when I speak to other people at events. How do you, how do you pitch uh, the uniqueness of Iroha? Uh, okay. I will, uh, just a second, Nicola, I will jump in into this. So we send mm -hmm. the updates for the description of Iroha for the web page. Hopefully they will be on the web page uh, this week. So what we think it's a, it's a key difference is of course the architectural approach that we don't have smart contracts for now. We have the, we are dealing with the commands. Uh, so we have two types of commands and then we have a very great permission model uh, which can be used uh, and it can serve in the financial applications. So applications of the blockchain for the financial uh, sector. Uh, and now Nikolai will probably add a few things. So, sorry, Nikolai, that I jumped in, but I think it's important that we update also the information on the web page. Right, exactly. So my elevator pitch is, well, I usually say that Eroha is really straightforward and simple. So we've got built-in financial and identity management capabilities that, you know, allow creation of blockchain-powered application in less than, well, let's say five minutes or something. It is trusted. So we've got a fast and highly secure consensus algorithm called yet another consensus which protects Iroha networks from failures or adversary participants. Um, well, Iroha is secure, so all actions of users are verified with high speed, independent and public, publicly available ED uh, signatures. We're all supportable, so we support Linux, Mac OS software environment, uh, with hardware layer including x86 and ARM powered systems. And we're really client-centric, which means that we can easily substitute existing backend systems without any noticeable changes for the client applications. And we can easily integrate into mobile, desktop, or web front-end applications with our help of broad range of SDKs, which are JavaScript, uh, Java, C Sharp, uh, <clears throat> and number of languages that, are, that support Protobuf and uh, SVAG. <clears throat> In short, that's it, but uh, we definitely need to put this somewhere uh, in a way that we are compared to the rest of Hyperledger greenhouse platforms. And you know, I think uh, it's also really important to mention that some use cases are really better for the other platforms. And we think that uh, our use cases are, you know, uh, those that uh, are not really sophisticated and uh, that involve a lot of mobile uh, platforms. Uh, we, we were positioning ourselves before as a mobile first or mobile centric, so something like this, and it was interpreted uh, incorrectly, something like we were the platform that, you know, uh, is able to, to, to be deployed on the mobile phone, but it's not. We just have a wide range of SDKs and we are easily integrated into existing mobile applications. But we, are we will continue working on that as well. I mean, on the comparison with the rest of uh, platforms. Yeah, so just to add to this, so Great. we- So uh, on the, the mobile- Yeah, uh, so what we did with the descriptions, we followed the structure on the Hyperledger web page. So to go from the very high level description of the, of the platform, uh, deeper and deeper to two more levels. And the last one is a little bit what Nikolai did right now, uh, talk about the technical differences of the platform, but there are also two levels above that give you some overview of the platform and, and its characteristics. I would also like to go back to the, in Amsterdam, we were talking with Tracy uh, about this comparison, uh, how, how is this going? So that to provide on the uh, Hyperledger webpage, uh, easy to use tool to compare different, all, all five platforms. Are we, are we planning to proceed with this or no, or? Uh, I don't think that we've had more progress on that front. I think there's a lot of difficulty in trying to uh, fit each of the projects into a narrow bucket that you could, right. gives me a decision tree for. So we had a long <laughs> afternoon discussion at the Hackfest 
And the general sense, certainly from my perspective, from others um, that were present was, we shouldn't do this. I, I mean, I think if, you know, the more that we try to sort of differentiate, you know, what project X, Y, or Z is from project Y, X, or Z, it doesn't, I, I'm not sure how that actually helps Hyperledger, right? I'm not sure how that actually is going to help us start to be a lot more collaborative across product, uh, project um, uh, boundaries. And, you know, certainly the intention of the umbrella slash greenhouse was to bring projects under a common intellectual property, you know, uh, regime under uh, open governance, under, um, uh, under the Linux Foundation, so that they could basically build off each other's successes and to, you know, start working towards increased componentization, potentially sharing of components like with, you know, the borough EVM and so forth. And the crypto library and all these things doesn't really help us if we're continuing to treat these things as somehow or other competitive with one another, right? People should choose whatever their platform choices based on, you know, their experience with it or their confidence in it or whatever. But I don't think Hyperledger should be going around trying to make that case. I don't think it's appropriate for, any of us that go out there. I think it's, I think it's fine to sort of say what the projects are working on. I, I think it's especially important that we highlight where they're collaborating um, and, you know, what release they're on and all that kind of stuff. But trying to pigeonhole a platform that's, you know, I mean, seriously, there's, it, it's, it's, it's almost a, a fool's errand. Right. So, and I think that at the end of the day, it, it, it doesn't serve our, our purposes here. So uh, um, this is Mick. Um, I, I think that there's an implication behind your comment <clears throat> that I want to make sure we understand, which is, are you implying that there is one platform that addresses no, all of these issues? I am not. I am not. OK, so then so then maybe focusing the differentiation on which problems is a particular platform good at? might be the appropriate way. Or which ones are they focused on trying to address? Exactly. That's exactly right, Mick. And but that's a different position. It, it's, right? that's yeah, a, it, exactly yeah. that. I'm just saying that there there's value yeah. in differentiation, but the differentiation oh. should be should should be focused on what are they what problems are they good at solving rather than, you know, this is a particular company's version of it or whatever it is. Yeah, no, I, I think I think that's right. And, and and I know that, you know, and I don't know how many others are aware of this, but there's ongoing work from the marketing committee, Meredith and and others to to do another series of greenhouse videos from for each of the projects. And, you know, it, it started out in the direction of, oh, you know, let's try and, you know, pigeonhole them. But instead, you know, I think that they're they're going in the direction of the conversation that we had at the Hackfest, which is more exactly to that point, Nick, of highlighting what are the projects working on, what what thing, what problems are they trying to solve, um, you know, um, and uh, and and also to demonstrate how you know that those efforts are you know are valuable to the whole community and not just to the single project. So. Um, Again, you know, I, th I think it's a, it's a, it's a mindset kind of a thing, right? You know, so, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be continuing for the next two, three years, I think, uh, various experiments to see how do we get, you know, consensus at scale. I say this all the time, consensus at scale with, you know, high throughput and low latency and privacy. Solve that problem and, you know, you get the Nobel Peace Prize, right? Because it's really hard to do. And there's all kinds of compromises that have to be made and different uh, explorations and how to do all those things um, from a technical perspective. And the various projects are working on different aspects of this total problem domain. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, we all benefit from each other's work. That's how it's supposed to work anyway. I'd, I'd completely agree on that, on that uh, <clears throat> coloring there, Chris, is, is is it's really easy, I think, for people to fall into the mindset of going, 
okay, so, so you use this for that and this for that and this for the other. And it's almost like, like there's this mentality there of trying to construct like our product line. You know, it's like a, sing, it's, it's like a company thinking, um, which if you're not careful can lead you into saying, well, we shouldn't have anything which has got overlap. You know, like overlap is a sin. Um, you know, we, we should have, you know, well, this is your answer for this and this is your answer for the other. Uh, but that is very much a product line thinking mentality rather than saying well yeah there, there absolutely will be probably lots of overlap between these because we don't know we really don't know what what, what the answers are um so yeah it, it's it's just a way of, of of thinking there yeah but if if i go back to the discussion in amsterdam i think there were several ways how we can help the end users so people that want to use different platforms not to say just hey guys you have uh, so many choices now go on and try them all and and spend you know half a year discovering what are the differences so we were discussing to give them something like the you know the comparison that they can do quickly to see the key differences between the platforms and i still think there are some that we can list but then we were also talking about the the sandbox project so that we may be provide them the possibility to uh, try the same problem on different platforms of, or different problems on, on the platforms so that they can see how they work in, in reality. Uh, so I think this, this, we should continue with, with these efforts to somehow make a step forward to the end users that are, uh, at least in my experience, in many cases confused which platform to choose and then they, they just follow the mainstream so to say and, and always pick the same which might be good or, or not for, for their, their use case. Yeah, so I'd like to just pick up the uh, collaborative angle there. Uh, I think that your project might be the only one that's using the Edwards curve for signatures right now. And we do have this uh, CryptoLib project in a good discussion uh, yesterday about um, a simple signing interface. So that might be something that, that you might want to take a look at because that would help round out the, the list of signing algorithms that, that we're incorporating into that definition. At a later date, because uh, I don't think we'll have time for it today, I would like to also better understand um, your, your not smart contracts model, because that sounds like that might be interesting to uh, interesting for all of us to understand what that looks like a little bit more. And then uh, the third thing that, that came up in the last thing from my perspective that I thought was interesting to dig in a little further is on your uh, consensus. So I, I think that there was a, originally a, um, a PBFT uh, variant in mind when Iroha was launched. And I see that you've You've mentioned that you're working towards a Byzantine fault tolerant consensus in your notes there. Um, there's another consensus collaboration point that's interesting for you that, that over on the Sawtooth project, there's a consensus uh, interface that, that's been worked on recently that, that seems to be able to accommodate Raft, PDFT, Poet, and, and a few others. So. Uh, would very much like input on that. And then also understanding, of course, from the Roja perspective, um, obstacles and opportunities on the particular Byzantine fault tolerant consensus that you're uh, working on. Okay. And, and also, yes, please. Uh, uh, on, in the same spirit, uh, you mentioned uh, identity management as a special case. And we have in the identity paper, um, sections dealing with different uh, DLTs under the uh, Hyperledger hothouse. Iroha, I just lifted stuff about a year ago from your website, which basically just said something like Unix style permissions. So I would like to invite you guys to come to the identity working group and contribute on that section of the paper because we are sorely missing uh, contributions from Iroha there. Uh, if the time is not convenient, please uh, interact using uh, 
you know, mailing lists or any, any, any other form of uh, communication. And I do second, uh, you know, all, all of these things in terms of uh, uh, what this update means for the community is what we should be focused on, uh, which includes all, this, all these distinguishing characteristics uh, which can inform uh, development in other, other DLTs, which is, a, of course, very good thing to do. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. We are definitely, we will definitely try to join. We already joined the performance working group and we tried, as Nikolai mentioned, cello. So we are looking forward to, uh, you know, changes in cello. So we will be able to uh, leverage on, on this tool and contribute to the tool uh, in the future as well. We are also using Caliper. So I think there are a lot of common points for all the platforms. Yeah. Yes, I just want to jump in really quick. Uh, you had meeting yesterday. We saw we saw that, and uh, I think next week we will definitely participate in identity uh, working group uh, discussion. So, um, as, uh, as for the things that Dan has told, um, uh, r r I'll I'll start with the design of our smart contracts. Um, the biggest issue was always how to deal with our uh, relational state. And uh, while we were designing the platform, we definitely had some troubles and just understanding how to put virtual machine into that. So for now, we think that the logical step uh, in order you know, to let users use more sophisticated API than what we provide and more customized is to provide them an ability to compose their SQL uh, queries and uh, SQL commands. So our vision for the next version of Aroha would be to provide them such capabilities so, they, they, so that they can compose something similar to transaction processor in SOTUS, but uh, with means of SQL. And uh, we, we also have found some researchers that were really interested in Aroha and, and how to, you know, um, make smart contracts applicable for uh, data processing uh, so that it, it can be made uh, on a really high, high scale in SQL databases. So um, smart contracts thing, yeah, we definitely uh, want to have a more customized API, but we don't think that we will support virtual machine uh, uh, in, in, the, for, in the next release, uh, but what we're going to do in next release is to provide our users, our users uh, an ability to create customized commands and queries with SQL. As for cryptography library, I've seen that you're working uh, right now on the shared crypto library and we would be happy to participate in, in that. But I think we're just, you know, lacking resources and uh, we definitely need to allocate somehow in the team working on that because we, we already have our crypto library and uh, if uh, we had previously discussed this uh, while a crypto library was, you know, this project was starting in, in lab, maybe we were, maybe crypto library was a different one. I'm not sure. Uh, so yeah. And uh, as for the third point, uh, can you remind me what was your third point? Uh, the consensus. Yes, as for the consensus, we have started with Sumiragi and we understood that there were so many design, uh, the, so many tricky parts in design. So we decided to change this a bit and split consensus into two steps. One is, let's say, order consensus. That's where a consensus for ordering phase is happening and then uh, have a, a state consensus or consensus of peers on the contents for the block. Um, we delivered the first one under the name of yet another consensus. And uh, right now we're working on uh, BFT ordering service as at the moment ordering service is unfortunately single point of failure. And uh, we are working uh, with, I think uh, we are discussing right now Liveness and some proofs with the creator of P-Chain algorithm. 
So she's really thrilled with an idea of leaderless uh, BFT consensus. And uh, our biggest issue right now is we just don't have enough people to help with an extensive description of how it uh, works. And uh, we've got a, a draft of paper, but we need to finish it as soon as we will uh, finish with description of ordering service and with its implementation. We've got a plan to release the paper, but we just need to finish with implementation of ordering service first because you know we need to also show results in comparison. We just don't have so many maintainers. If we maybe if we had more contributors and uh, more diverse community, the result would, would be different. And I think that's what we need to focus on as well, so that. Uh, people in Hyperledger and uh, not only in Hyperledger are better informed about our design decisions. Something like this. And uh, uh, we've seen that uh, SOTUS architecture supports pluggable consensus and I participated in the discussion uh, in 2017. Um, we think that in the future, maybe SOTUS can reuse the implementation of YAC, but we need to look deeper into that and check how to implement this in the interfaces. Um, okay, great. Do you guys think you could, I mean, uh, a lot of this stuff sounds really interesting and I think, um, you know, it, it might help you get more contributors if you uh, present some of this more broadly. Um, so I was going to ask if you guys could give a talk on kind of some of your technical features uh, at, Either at either the Hackfest with it or at the member summit uh, this coming October, because I think that would be really useful for everyone. Uh, and you know, just just telling everyone about your features might get some people to help work on them. Yeah, actually, the answer is yes, because we were already on the uh, Hackfest in Amsterdam. We will probably be in uh, Montreal. Uh, and we also submitted, I think, three proposals for the uh, for the event in Basel. Basel. So hopefully they will be accepted and, and we will be able to uh, present this and, and discuss. And also, in addition, we are trying to record uh, sessions, technical sessions, explaining uh, about the platform and uh, doing the hands-on on the platform. And I was thinking, I, I was reading the hands-on blockchain with Hyperledger Fabric. They have very nice examples. So I was thinking maybe we can do side-by-side -side comparison. I don't know if Hyperledger would be interesting in this and if the authors would allow, but I think it's, it, it shouldn't be a problem for the, uh, for the example to be, to be reused. And then we can do a side-by-side -side comparison, how to do the same thing in two different platforms and then, then maybe later on other platforms can join and, and do the same. <clears throat> All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nicola. Hey. And, uh, Alish. This uh, is Dave Hughesby. I want to jump in with one last suggestion. Um, one of the things you can do immediately to, to try to grow your uh, contributor base would be to just start recording your meetings that you guys have, even if they're in Russian. Um, and publishing them because uh, at least you'll be able to reach the Russian speaking community and you know, you don't have to worry about doing your meetings in, in English or anything like that. So it's really just about getting transparency on your process, your meetings and things like that. Um, and, and you can do it immediately, you know, don't worry about necessarily getting it into another language. Um, and, and then we'll just, that'll be a good first step, first step and you can go from there. Yep. Okay, so we have two more updates on tap, so I suggest we move on. So thanks, thanks guys. Good update, good discussion. Um, next up is healthcare. I'm not sure, Todd, who was going to present that. I believe Nate is on for that. Nate, are you there? He's on the call. Nate, you may still be muted. muted. Yeah. Hey, you need to I am unmuting myself. There you go. There you are. There I am. There I am. <clears throat> cool. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, Nate DeNiro. I'm chairing the healthcare working group. And uh, just to go over our update here quickly. Um, 
you know, we started evolving the group the, earlier on this year. Uh, we've had a few starts uh, over the past three or four years with the group, or two or three years with the group. And um, so in this, in this iteration, you know, we did some organization. We did some, some um, uh, surveys of the group to get, get uh, direction. So I feel like we've gotten a pretty good direction now. We decided to split up uh, our activities into subgroups based around different areas of interest in, in, in the healthcare industry. Um, and I think we had touched upon that previously, but you know, very simply, we broke out into a payer group that focuses on um, insurance type issues. And then of course, you know, we, have, we also have the challenge of dealing with the healthcare system um, healthcare is different around the world. Uh, healthcare in the United States uh, takes up a lot of the air in the entire industry globally. So, you know, we do a lot to try to, or we, we do pay some attention to try to balance uh, things and not make it too U.S. centric because, you know, given that's you know, where the organization's based and uh, a lot of the participants are based in the United States, that's where a lot of the thinking and the perspectives tend to come from. So. That's something that we're, we're certainly paying attention to, but um, we have about two or three groups that have now formed and are, have gotten very active. We have a, a patient subgroup that's focusing on patient focused issues around um, the technology uh, use cases. Um, and in, in particular, they've decided to take up this donor milk database uh, use case. A as uh, you know an important use case, but B because we've also have some contributors uh, and people that are interested in the problem. Uh, so we're we're starting to form some activity around that, and actually there's a potential that we might even have a code base um, to either build or uh, have donated in uh, for that particular use case. So we're kind of you know shepherding. Uh, that newly formed group and those newly formed activities, uh, you know, into some, some work product on that vein. Same with the payer subgroup, you know, they're, they're uh, working on writing a white paper. So structuring the white paper, finding out use, you know, figuring out use cases to dive into. And then of course, getting working on, on writing a paper. It's kind of the next phase that they're in. Our EMR subgroup is another one that's recently started. They have literally just recently started, so they just had their first meeting this week. And uh, I just got a report back from them here uh, this morning, so I didn't include the details. But um, again, they just had a meeting this week to organize the group and, and move things forward there. So um, yeah, I mean, and, and we're also a group that's starting from subject matter uh, as opposed to a group that's starting from um, a particular technology or a particular project that's been donated to uh, the Hyperledger project. So, you know, our, our sort of approach and being a little different probably than, than, a, a, than a, a project that is technology-based. Um, you know, in terms of work products, you know, we're working on um, growing the group, um, putting out some white papers and providing some perspective, and then also trying to generate some code if we possibly can. And that's, that's one of the harder things because we are starting from a conceptual basis as opposed to, a, 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 again, a technical product. So um, the diversity of the group is pretty good. Um, you know, we've got people that are coming to the group um, regularly, uh, new people uh, introducing themselves. And I think once we get uh, a little more there formed in the group, um, we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have uh, you know, a, a more people join, uh, but we've had a, had a pretty good, pretty good turnout and pretty good uh, effort by the participants thus far over the past three or four months since we last spoke. So and that's uh, that is kind of all I have in terms of update. So happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Um, this is Dan again on the the planned work products. Um, They'd be good to get just a little bit more specific there in, in yeah. update. Um, that'd be, yeah, it would be probably a little bit easier to track, right? There's a specific work paper, there's a specific set of requirements, and that might help uh, crystallize more participation too. Yeah, absolutely. No, totally agreed. And, and that's just it. We're, 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 start of starting, we're sort of starting from zero. 
to the group um, you know, from, from earlier this year. So in terms of the progress we've made compared to previous years, it's pretty good, but we, do, we definitely have a long way to go. So. Yeah, that's great. I do sense that there is a lot more focus now. Any other question for Nate? Sounds to me like, you know, it's actually going fairly well, um, which is good to hear. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. I mean, it'd be great if we could, we could do more, but, um, you know, I think given the time that everyone has and, and their interests and, and all that, I think that, you know, when we, we formed the subgroups and had, uh, people really itching to get, get going and, um, you know, we've had, we've had two or three people step up and, 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 and choose to lead those subgroups, but uh, we've got a few more subgroups that um, are unled. Uh, so, you know, that will be a part of the effort as well over the next quarters to get, get those more active. It, again, it is it is just a matter of getting getting people active in these groups and, and figuring out a problem to work on because, like I said, it's not like there's there's a there's a, a sawtooth or an aroha or there's like some kind of platform for them to rally around. They mm -hmm. just rally around the rallying around ideas and trying to turn that into right. work products. Right. Great. Any other questions for Nathan? All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, next up is Bawa. Yep. I'm here. Well, I uh, let me post the link to the rocket chat and the uh, Zoom chat. Okay. Um, so the overall working group healthy is good, uh, including the activities and uh, uh, um, uh, diversity and also the meeting. Uh, now we have a bi-weekly meeting and uh, for each meeting there are uh, almost uh, over 20% averagely and also the work um, uh, focus on four areas including the uh, development and innovation and the internalization and education and uh, collaboration and uh, uh, adopt, adopt scenarios and also we um, hold uh, meetups uh, usually uh, like uh, monthly or bi-monthly in uh, the, those large cities in China. So um, you may find uh, more details about the uh, working group uh, through the link I post. And uh, I would like to um, pay more uh, time uh, for the issues and uh, for the uh, question and answers. So, uh, in the past quarter, we have found that there are uh, three major issues. The first one is that uh, one of the, uh, our governing board person, that uh, Charlie Tai, who, uh, who, who was from Wanda, he just returned due to uh, some personal issues. So uh, we, we want to add some uh, new person into the governing board. However, after checking with the group charter that uh, we found that uh, there is no definition on how to process to generate a new governing person. So we would uh, seeking for more uh, suggestions on how to resolve this. And uh, the second issue is related to the how to enhance the uh, collaboration with local universities. Um, through our meetup uh, and other te uh, technical events, we found that uh, all the uh, teachers and students from the university are quite uh, interested with uh, open source technologies and especially with the uh, hyperledger. But uh, currently there are only very few um, uh, universities that are uh, or, uh, some member of the community. So for those students and the teachers from the university that are not a member of um, the hyperledger community, they want to know how to contribute more to the project. So we are consider how to uh, enhance that. And uh, we have an online meeting discussion with the experts from the Lynx Foundation. And uh, we guess uh, it, it might be a good idea that we design some um, incentive plans, like uh, uh, design some badge, or, or something uh, similar for the students' contributors. 
And the third issue is um, is an old problem. It's related to the uh, internalization work that uh, we uh, have some volunteers that they feel interested with the fabric documentation. So they have uh, made some translation of the fabric documentation. And currently, uh, the uh, all the documentation results are hosted with a third party repo. So it might be uh, 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 encouraging if we can consider to um, have some official uh, like GitHub repo or Gary repo to host the documentation and uh, formalize the entire process. Okay, so that's the three major issues. Uh, we want to seeking for the suggestion on the TSC. So, thanks, Bawa. So, so item number one, um, sort of replacing a co-chair. Um, I would. So we we have a process, and so you know now the the TSC essentially approves a recommendation from um, a working group to. Uh, uh, for, for a new chair. So I think for a co-chair, it would be essentially the same. So my recommendation would be that you just take a, um, you know, a, a poll amongst your members um, as to, you know, ask for nominations and, and, and take a poll and, um, and, and select somebody new and then bring it to the TSC and we can approve it. Um, um, we just, uh, we had a, <clears throat> pardon me, we had one, I think it was last week, um, where we approved an, a chair, for, a new chair for the uh, public sector working group. So, so I think that process is in place. If you need, I think Rye or Tracy should be able to point you at where it says that in the wiki. Um, yeah. In terms yeah. of uh, the... Uh, Chris, uh, uh, th thanks first for your uh, suggestion. Uh, however, the problem here is that uh, there's no uh, like a formal membership of the uh, working group. So the working group currently is organized in a very uh, loose format. Mm -hmm. So we, we call um, the people like uh, volunteers. So um, we cannot quite uh, define who is the formal member to vote. But Bawa, I mean, what is the, do you actually have an issue you're trying to address? Like you have too many possible candidates and you're trying to figure out how you get to choose one? No, um, the, the, it's, it's not related to the candidate. Actually, the problem is related to who is uh, qualified to give a vote. Yeah, uh, so yeah. <clears throat> that, that problem is, is, is one that all of the working groups share. There's no... Yeah, yeah participation or membership in a working group. And so it's whoever shows up. <laughs> it's quite dynamic. Um, you know, share it on WeChat and share it on um, uh, on Rocket Chat and the mailing list and say we're going to choose between A and B if that's, you know, whoever nominates uh, is what I would suggest. Um, I don't yeah. think you need to have a... And, and then the TSC does the, the final uh, approval. And I mean, right. you know, it's not forever. If there is a problem, you can always right. talk about right. taking the person out. I mean, it's not different <laughs> from the TSE. When you we started, nobody really knew each other, and we just say, okay, right. let's see what the, how that works. You, usually, the problem is the other way. You don't have enough people yes. who are willing to it's, be the chair. <laughs> exactly. That's why I was asking what the real issue is, because right. So, do you so, have candidates? Uh, actually, I guess if we published the, the voting, there should be several candidates. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, 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 of course, your suggestion is that uh, we organize some voting and uh, yeah. that, okay. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. So, as for, um, uh, I lost my place. Where's issue, uh, issue one? Issue, that was one. So, yeah. in terms of, uh, two, that's actually an interesting one. Maybe we should take that offline and have a broader discussion um, about it, um, maybe with Tracy and Rye and Brian and, and team. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thought to add something like that. Um, yeah. I don't know if we can cover it today. On the third part, that's sort of on me, but again, you, you know, I've been back and, you know, uh, my, 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 my concern is how does this go forward formally for the future, and we just need to have that conversation um, to to help me help the other maintainers of the project get comfortable with the fact of maintaining 
a Chinese translation um, when we don't have a whole lot of Chinese um, maintainers. Um, and and that, that's really my, my problem. Um, so we should, we should take this offline and, and have a conversation about this. I, <clears throat> you know, I appreciate that the work's been done and I'm sure it's probably fine, but my concern is that when it comes to technical um, uh, aspects of the documentation, um, uh, we, we want to make sure that it's correct in whatever language. So anyway, um, uh, I'm happy to take that up with you offline. Sure, Chris. Um, I totally understand your concern. And uh, about the issue two. It's not uh, just mine, by the way. It's others. That's my point is it, I, I need to help in, in getting the others comfortable with this. So maybe it needs to be a formal proposal or something. But I mean, Chris, I, I just want to point out, I mean, this might be a case where we just have to, you know, and trust the people to do the best they can. I, it, uh, yeah, I understand that. But then you have a thing and then it has to be maintained. And yeah. so, yeah. Uh, Chris, do you think it's a good idea if we put the repo as a hyperledger lab uh, repo? I would have no problem with that at all. I, I, I'd like to get it into Fabric if we can, you know, if it's not just Chinese, if it's, you know, uh, and we have a, you know, a strong support, you know, system yeah. to sustain yeah. it and somebody to, to really own it. Uh, I think that's the important piece of it. The the only issue is that the process of documentation translation is quite different with the code contribution. So yeah, it is yeah, exactly using the same repo. <laughs> right. There, yeah, problem. Yeah. No, that part I understand, but um, um, just the the translation itself. I know that the the various you know tools for that you still have to go through and review and make sure it's correct. Um, especially for something like Chinese, because um, it's so subtle. Um, okay. Anyway. Um, okay. I'm, so. I'm, I'm happy to, to to take that offline with you. Yes, sir, thanks. Any other questions for Boa? Okay, if not, then we're at end of job. Thanks everybody. And we'll talk to you all in two weeks. Cheers. Thanks, bye. Cheers everyone, have a good day.